Yeah, hello everybody. It's 11 a.m. In this lecture, I want to talk about one of the main concepts, or maybe the most important concept in machine learning, uh, which is regularization. And <clears throat> somewhat different to other approaches to explain regularization, I will not immediately present you uh, methods and discuss methods for regularization, but I will try to motivate or in some sense to derive regularization methods using more intuitive concepts like robustness, symmetries, uh, invariances or data augmentation. So <clears throat> let's consider a particular application that we can model as a machine learning problem and where we might want to use regularization methods. So let's assume you go hiking. Finland has a lot of nature uh, and trails in the nature. So at some point you might be interested in knowing the distance from your car. So the quantity of interest for such a data point, so the data point could represent my current location or somewhere in Finland. And the quantity of interest that I would like to know is the distance to my car. It's important to know how far away am I from my car. For example, to know if I, if I have trouble getting back before the night or before it's getting dark. And how can I predict this quantity of interest or what, what means do I have to predict this label, the distance to my car? Well, I guess many of us and like me have a smartphone which allows me to take a snapshot. So I can take a snapshot of my current location, of the scene that I'm currently seeing. So I'm walking along some trail and I take a snapshot. So if I only have this information at my disposal to predict the label well then i could say i have features the as features the red green blue intensities of all the pixels and let's assume uh, we have a, a camera that delivers thousand by thousand pixel images so which gives one million pixels in total and we can stack all the red green blue intensities of all this one million pixels into a long feature vector. So we would have 3 million features. And then I can use this feature vector and uh, uh, input it to a, a predictor. So remember a predictor uh, in machine learning methods is nothing else but a map that takes the feature vector, that takes this vector of 3 million red, green, blue intensities and outputs a guess or an estimate for the label for the distance to my car. And let's say I have, I have taken this snapshot in the past and I, I measured, somehow I measured the distance uh, to my car. So from this location, I, I counted my steps such that I know in hindsight that the distance to my car was 100 meter. So for this data point with these features or for this snapshot, I know the label. So this is a label data point. And I can use this labeled data point to try out different predictor maps. So I could say, I, so if we look at the, at the simple scatter plot, so here we have this box here represents the, the snapshot I have just shown you. So the snapshot has some features. So this is only a, a, a cartoon image because the feature vector has 3 million entries and I cannot, uh, I cannot easily uh, map these three million features into one one axis. So this is just a cartoon just to show you here I have features different features along the x-axis and each features each of these features which corresponds to a snapshot is also assigned a label like the distance it took from this snapshot to the car and for this one snapshot I know what the true label is. So what I could do now is try to learn or try out different predictor maps that take the feature vector and output a prediction, a prediction or a guess for the label. 
y hat. So this y hat is the guess that we have, what is the distance to the car based on the snapshot with features x. And a very simple but yet powerful class of methods is based on linear predictors. So we make this mapping uh, using this inner product or product, uh, sum, weighted sum of, of features. So this W transpose X means that we weight each of these features by some weight. So X1 is weighted by W1 up to Xn is weighted by Wn and we sum up this weighted features. So this is what this shorthand notation means. And this is already a very large class of functions because if, if this feature vector has 3 million entries, I can represent a lot of different such maps by using different weights. So I have shown here three different ones, but in general, there are infinitely many and they're actually very much infinite, uh, many such, such function, functions, linear functions. So and the challenge in machine learning is, what is the best function? So which predictor should I choose out of this different one? And well, one very intuitive way is, let's compare it to, to the labels or let's compare the predictions y hat I get for data points for which I know the true label. So for this box here, this snapshot I have shown you before, I know that the true label was 100 meters. So I can minimize the error, the discrepancy between the predicted label and the true label for this one single data point. However, this doesn't help me too much because any of these three curves, which corresponds to three different predictors, passes perfectly through this, uh, this labeled data point. So the training error is zero for all of these three predictors. So this criterion of minimizing the loss between the predicted labels and the true labels on a, on a training set of data points for which I know the labels doesn't work here. And this is not, uh, I mean, this, this looks like a, a pathological case. I have only one data point. So how on earth should I learn a, a predictor, a good predictor from my data point? But this already illustrates the, I would say, the, uh, the setting in many, many machine learning applications. Because what is important is not the absolute number of labeled data points that we have, but the, the ratio of number of labeled data points to the number of parameters that you can tune. And in this case, we can tune 3 million weights. So we would need roughly on the same order as we have number of parameters, we would need the same amount of labeled data points. So for uh, using 3 million features, which we can weight with 3 million separate weights, we would need 3 million labeled images. And that's where big data comes in. So to, to train these highly complex models, and yes, uh, linear regression can also be, can already be highly complex if we use many features. So training such highly complex models requires a lot of data or big data, which we sometimes might not have. So in, in this case, we only have one, one snapshot, only one data point. We cannot easily download, or at least I'm not aware of a database which contains 3 million snapshots of exactly the area where I do my hike and the distance to the car. So if somebody sets up such a database, then we could easily fit or could, it would be more reasonable to uh, learn a linear predictor just by minimizing the, the loss over the labeled data points. However, in this case, we only have one single labeled data point. So let's assume we, we pick one of those three. So, Let's say we pick this red curve or the predictor corresponding to this red curve, which is given by the weight W1. And we use then this predictor for a new location. So now we have a new data point. I moved on or it was at this another day. So I take a snapshot and want to know what is the distance to my car. So what, how do I do this? Well, I take this a linear predictor with weight W1 and apply this weight to the feature vector X that is obtained from this data point. So I stack all the pixels, red, green, blue intensities of the pixels in this image to this vector X. I apply the linear predictor and get a, a guess for the distance to my car. However, in this case, I was about the same location or the same distance from my car. So the label, the label value of, of this new data point here 
is about the same as for the previous one, for the training data point, 100 meters. However, the prediction might be way, way different because the pixels look different. The scenery looks way different than before. So we say that this predictor does not generalize well to new data points. By new data points, we mean data points which are different from the one which are used to train or to select, to select the, the predictor. So I selected the predictor W1 by looking or by comparing it with this training data point. So uh, the criterion was for using this red predictor, it passed perfectly through this uh, training data point. However, for new data points like this one, which shows up here, it doesn't work at all. So it doesn't, this predictor doesn't generalize well to new data points. So how can we, how can we address this situation? How can we avoid this pitfall of learning a predictor that doesn't generalize well? Does anyone have an idea? You can also comment via the Zoom chat. So how can we find out if a predictor doesn't generalize well? Mm, to get the large error? Yes, a large error, but on a new data point. Yeah, yeah. So we need to try it out on new data points. But how do we get new data points? So this is also sometimes called validation, validation data. However, we, we cannot use this now as validation because this is the new data point where I want to predict. I cannot use it for validation because here is the time where I want the prediction. I only want to use the predictor. So where do I get more, more training data? Well, as I said, I could try to, to ask friends to collect snapshots and report the distances to the car and set up a database. So collect more data. However, regularization takes a different approach. Regularization is based on the idea that a predictor should be robust or not too sensitive to small perturbations of the features. So let me illustrate what, what I mean with this. For example, if I look at this tr uh, training data point. So this is the snapshot that I, I showed in the beginning for which I know the true label. So this is one labeled data point and it's the only labeled data point that I have. Then it's reasonable or I, I expect a, a good predictor for the distance to my car that it's not too sensitive if I, for example, add some small zero pixels. So I randomly add zero pixels or zero out pixels. I replace a few pixels here with zero, with, with noise. So this is a, a, perturb, a perturbed data point. Here's the original data point for which I know the true label value. It's 100 meters, the distance to my car. And I know the features. So I can read in the features uh, as the red, green, blue intensities of the pixels. And now I have a perturbed data point, which has the same label because I know this is obtained from adding zero pixels to the same snapshot. So the distance is the same, 100 meters, but the features now are different. So I have the original features, the original red, green, blue intensities, plus some perturbation, plus some noise, which uh, is obtained from adding zeros or zero pixels here randomly. So what, what do I have now? I have a new data, I have a new labeled data point. So I can augment my training data this is the original training data point by another data point, which has the same label value, but a different feature vector because the feature vector is now X tilde. Can I ask? Yes, please. Uh, uh, it's written that uh, um, small perturbations. What is that small? I mean, how much is that small? Yeah, very good question. So, this depends on the application. So there is no general recipe that tells you how many pixels you can zero out and you still want to have a, a reliable or you still want to uh, get the same, uh, the same uh, label value. So this depends on the particular application. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no, no simple theory that tells you you should replace at most 10% of the pixel randomly 
with zeros. Mm -hmm. So this, this in the end requires again tuning. So the amount of pixels that you zero and still require the same label, this is what, what we call a hyperparameter. And choosing this hyperparameter can be based on, on domain knowledge. So, you know, you, you have some intuition how, how many pixels are useful for, for still recognizing the scene. You can try out, so you can, you can make an a, a experiment or a panel and try out replacing 10% pixel mm -hmm. with zeros, replacing 50% pixel with zero, and you can then yourself judge so I still get the, get the scene or I don't recognize any scene anymore. So this needs manual tuning. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Mm -hmm. But let's say we, we have some idea of how many pixels we can, we can replace with zeros. Let's say up to 10% randomly chosen pixels with zero. And this gives us new data points, perturbed data points. So uh, you can create out of nothing, in some sense out of nothing, more labeled data. Mm -hmm. And this is called data augmentation. Uh, and in this way, so when you augment your data or the label data points by adding this random noise, you immediately make the, or as a side effect, you make the, the resulting predictor that you learn when minimizing the squared error or the, the loss over this augmented data points, you make it robust against training errors. Uh, against um, small errors in, in the data. So it might be that you do not intentionally add the zeros, but your, your camera, the smartphone camera sensor has some uh, hardware failures and it, it flips some pixels. So you don't intentionally add the zero pixels, but actually the, the hardware makes these errors. Mm -hmm. And when you train the model, when you train a linear predictor with this augmented data points, then you make the, the resulting predictor must be robust against such small errors. So you, you also get a, a form of robustness when you use data augmentation. However, another effect is with data augmentation, we increase our training data set. And more training data is, as we discussed before, is what we would like to have to avoid, uh, to avoid uh, poor generalization, so to avoid a scenario like this. So we train only on this data point. On this data point, we get zero training error with this red predictor. But on any other data point, the prediction error is super large. If we would have used this augmented data point, then this would have most likely ruled out using this predictor, this red predictor, because we would have a second augmented data point somewhere here. And this red curve should maybe be more flat. And having a more flat curve would have meant a smaller prediction error for this new data point here. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic idea behind, or one of the basic idea behind uh, data augmentation. And this data augmentation then can be used for regularization, which I'll show a bit later in more detail. But here we, can, we don't need to stop. So this is only one way of, or one type